Is JK Rowling transphobic? Is she a TERF? That is the question today. Now, uh, for one, I've been called a TERF. Doesn't make any sense because I'm not a feminist, and uh, the F in TERF stands for feminist. It's a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. So, you can't be a TERF if you're not a feminist. This also ties into the idea that uh, apparently people on the left think TERFs are right-wing now? I don't know about that. The TERF ideology grew out of people like Valerie Solanas and Andrea Dworkin, though she would go back and forth on that topic over the course of her career. A book that I had to read when learning about all this stuff in university was The House That Jill Built, A Lesbian Nation in Formation. And that book basically described the ideological split that began within the second wave of feminism, where some women believed that trans women were in fact women and deserved a place at the feminist table, while other women believed that trans women were simply male infiltrators into female-only spaces. With the Lesbian Organization of Toronto in 1978 putting out a statement saying, A woman's voice was almost never heard as a woman's voice. It was always filtered through men's voices. So here a guy comes along saying, I'm going to be a girl now and speak for girls. And we thought, no you're not. A person cannot just join the oppressed. And it's not like their ideas aren't internally consistent. When your entire philosophy, when the source of your activism comes from the idea that women are biologically distinct from men, and that they therefore have different concerns, different needs, they face different oppressions, I can definitely see why, through that lens, you would exclude male infiltrators. But that's obviously not the whole story, is it? Because if you believe that trans women are women, then they do have a place. They're a different type of women, obviously. I don't think anybody who has their head on straight can say that cis women and trans women are the same type of woman. There's very clearly something different there. But I think any reasonable person can see that they are part of a, a broader feminine coalition. So, J.K. Rowling, then. I mean, she's older, isn't she? Do you think she can be grandmothered in? You know how you always have, like, that one older relative who, you know, just doesn't quite get it? But you just let him be because, you know, within five to ten years, they're going to be, like, either dead or irrelevant, so it's like, whatever. How old is J.K. Rowling? Oh, she's 55. That's, uh, that's not that old, is it? Damn. I thought she was older than that. This is not a story that I've commented on on my channel, uh, even though it's been developing over the years, because frankly I don't know too much about it, so let's kind of explore it together, okay? From what I can tell, the JK Rowling transphobia thing started a few years ago with this tweet. Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you, live your best life in peace and security. But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real, hashtag I stand with Maya, hashtag this is not a drill. Now, on the face of it, to me, this seems like a completely reasonable tweet, doesn't it? Dress however you please. Of course, that's personal freedom. Call yourself whatever you like. Of course, that's personal freedom. Sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. I obviously do not want any kind of non-straight sexuality to be banned. Live your best life in peace and security. Yeah, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. Now, this is interesting because it is often the case that gender and sex are conflated in this conversation. Most people who go by the trans women are women thing, um, they will say, and I think correctly so, that gender is the social role, while sex is the biological component of the conversation. So for me, it seems completely reasonable for me to say trans women are women and trans women are male. Trans women are not female because they're not, they're not biological females. However, they are women because that is the social component of, of the equation. So I think trans women are women, trans women are male, those are both true statements. And I am personally happy to use, like, Lilith's pronouns when I'm talking to her or something like that. Not because I actually believe she's a biological female. She's not, and she's even said that she isn't. But because I'm being polite. Because I respect her as a person. Because she's my friend. And just as I wouldn't shit-talk a friend behind their backs, I wouldn't do that to Lilith either. But on, this, on the face of it, this, this seems okay. I guess uh, Mark Hamill liked it? Was that a thing? All right. Apparently what J.K. Rowling was referring to was this individual, Maya Forstater. She lost her job after saying that people cannot change their biological sex, and she brought that to a tribunal, and then she lost that tribunal uh, last December. However, check this out. A woman who lost her job after saying that people cannot change their biological sex has lost an employment tribunal. Wasn't that the case? Like, 
That was just literally the linguistic sleight of hand that I was talking about a few minutes ago. People can't change their biological sex. They can change their gender. They can have various cosmetic surgeries if, if they want. But, you know, they, they can't change their biological sex. At least with our current level of technology. I'm sure, like, at some point we're going to have, like, the cyberpunk future. Where you can kind of zap yourself or take a pill and you'll, you'll be completely changed, like, even down to the chromosomes. That'll probably actually happen. You know, human ingenuity knows no bounds, in my opinion. But, like... The way things currently are, no, you can't change your biological sex. I don't think that's controversial to say. Maya Forstater did not have her contract renewed after posting a series of tweets questioning government plans to let people declare their own gender. Well, this is different from biological sex. Like, it, look at this, look at this, it's completely different. I really think that like people who report on this, they conflate the terms to make things seem more sensationalist than they actually are. Miss Forstater believes that trans women holding certificates that recognize their transgender identity cannot describe themselves as women. But that view is not worthy of respect in a democratic society, a judge said. I don't know, it depends on the kind of certificate, doesn't it? Like, in my opinion, if it were, say, a driver's license, in, it should probably say female on it if you're a trans woman, because if the officer who's pulling you over for a traffic stop or something has to look at you and then look at your, your license, they don't need to know anything about what's in your pants. It doesn't matter to them. So I, I have no problem with it saying female because in that situation you're presenting as female. However, if it were going to be the biological sex on, say, a health card, like an Ontario health card or something like that, or like a health card for, for some other kind of service, then you might want to put on that card, you know, the biological sex, maybe the fact that you're trans, stuff like that, because trans people have unique medical needs. You can't simply medically treat trans women as if they are the same as cis women because they have different medical needs. So, in my opinion, it, it depends what certificate we're talking about, right? Okay, so she was working as a, as a tax expert at the Think Tank Center for Global Development. She was not entitled to ignore the rights of a transgender person and the enormous pain that can be caused by misgendering. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like, I understand misgendering is rude. I understand that if I were to misgender somebody, they likely wouldn't want to associate with me. I, I don't necessarily buy the enormous pain. In fact, I think what's going on here is that the, the more a person doesn't pass, the more that misgendering might hurt them, right? Like, I know that uh, people who are, you know, exceptionally cruel, they might call Lilith a man. However, Lilith is uh, quite attractive. She passes quite well. And I think she just laughs it off because she knows that she passes quite well. But what was the actual event? Like, did she refuse to use a pronoun? Like, like I, I want to find it here. Hold on. It doesn't really say, does it? Maybe, maybe it's in the judgment. Let's see. The claimant stated that she first became concerned about proposed changes to the Gender Reg Recognition Act because of proposals for a move to permitting people to self-identify their gender. The claimant started to research the subject in 2017 to 2018 and began to tweet about it in August of 2018. She tweeted, The UK government consultation on reforming the Gender Recognition Act proposes to dramatically change the scope of law from requiring medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria for change of sex on birth certificate to using the basis of self-identification. Yeah, I don't know about this. If this is the case, I can't, I can't select it. If this is the case here, I definitely think that a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria is probably a better barometer than simply self-identification. Couldn't I then, just for shits and giggles walk into, say, a, a, some kind of place that issues a, a license or any kind of official paperwork in the UK. I don't know what they're called over there. But couldn't I walk in and be like, I self-identify as a woman. I want an F on this driver's license. And they would have no choice but to give it to me. That, that seems a bit ridiculous to me. It doesn't necessarily seem damaging, but it seems dumb. I share the concerns of fair play women that radically expanding the legal definition of women so that it can include both males and females makes it a meaningless concept and will undermine women's rights and protections for vulnerable women and girls. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I mean, maybe, but I'm not convinced. Some transgender people have cosmetic surgery. Most retain their birth genitals. Everyone's equality and safety should be protected, but women and girls lose out on privacy, safety, and fairness if males are allowed into changing rooms, dormitories, prisons, and sports teams. Well, those are all very different situations. For example, regarding changing rooms, I've always hated changing rooms. You know, I don't, I don't want to see another guy's dick in, in the changing room. It, it actually makes me kind of uncomfortable. I, like, I, I'd rather, like, you know, for a gym, I'd rather that they have stalls and there's none, and it kind of sucks. I don't want to go into a girl's changing room. I don't want to go into a guy's changing room. The, the entire concept just seems um, not private enough for me. And I kind of feel the same way about um, washrooms as well. Like, 
I'd, I'd rather public washrooms rather than having stalls and urinals just be replaced with like individual use washrooms. I don't know where like this quasi communal peeing came into a boat, but I've never liked it. Anyway, dormitories. I guess in the UK there's still um, sex segregated dormitories, eh? They're not that common over here. It's probably okay to let trans women into a women's dormitory, I think. And mainly it's because, you know, if there's going to be sexual assault in a women's dormitory, it doesn't matter really who's, com who's committing it. If a cis woman were to sexually violate another cis woman, you know, the fact that they're in the same dorm, it, it, it's, it doesn't really matter. Now with prisons, I'm actually on the opposite side of the whole dormitories thing. Because with prisons, you have people who are already guilty of something in there, right? And I actually recall seeing there was a case, I think, in the UK where a guy who, who was in fact a guy, he, as soon as he knew he was going to prison, he immediately transitioned so that he could get into a, a woman's prison and continue raping women in prison because he was going to prison for rape. And the legal system over in the UK just didn't want to say a single thing about it because they didn't want to come off as transphobic. And to me, that is ridiculous. It is, you know, a single situation, um, and I'm sure it does not happen often, but it still seems ridiculous to me, you know? Like, they probably should have caught that one, at least. But prisons are a harder one because these are people who are already criminals and they may in fact be more likely to get up to some shady shit than somebody who's in a dormitory, you know? Sports teams. The sports team is one I'm completely against. And it's mainly because of the physical differences between trans women and cis women. And I think that's something that is very well documented. However, I don't have a solution to that problem. Like, if you think about it, you can't... There's not really enough trans people to, like, have a trans league, is there? At the end of December 2018, the claimant said, uh... I think feminists are non-gender conforming and trans people are natural allies. If you look at the people that are concerned about this, they're lesbians, long-term LGBT activists, transsexuals, left-wing campaigners. They don't want to enforce gender conformity. Of course, in social situations, I would treat any trans woman as an honorary female and use whatever pronouns, etc. I wouldn't try to hurt anyone's feelings, but I don't think people should be compelled to play along with literal delusions like trans women are women. You know, it's hard to argue with this logic, isn't it? Because while I do think trans women are women, this is an internally consistent logic that she wrote right here. She's saying that she would treat any trans woman as an honorary female. I wouldn't word it as honorary female, but I get what she's saying. She'd use the pronouns that she wanted. She wouldn't try to hurt anyone's feelings. You know, that's all stuff that you do in a polite society. And I actually agree here. I don't think people should be compelled to say things like trans women are women. If they want to say them, fine. But I don't think an authority should force them. I don't think this, this is something that, like, the state should impose on people. I'm happy to do it because I agree with it, but I wouldn't want my views forced on anybody else. Please stand up for the truth that it is not possible for someone who is male to become female. Trans women are men and should be respected and protected as men. This, this is that conflation that I was talking about again. It is not possible for someone who is male to become female. True. Trans women are men because men is... Because man is the social role, I have to say no. False. I get the Sargon argument. You know, the adult human female argument. I get it. It, it, it makes complete sense. However, for, for me, it's like adult human female with an asterisk beside it. And the asterisk is simply the, the, the general fact that exceptions to the rule exist and often prove the rule true. I consider trans women to be that exception. I consider trans men to be that exception. Even though trans women fulfill the role of adult, yes, human, yes, female, no, I still consider them women because they are the exception that proves the rule. Because they are adapting a social role that does not actually line up with their biology. And yet, they're still making a good faith effort at it. So if your goal is to, you know, be polite to somebody or build a relationship with them or something along those lines, why wouldn't you treat them with that kind of respect? I think it's something that you do if you're nice, but I don't think the government should force you to do it. It's as simple as that. So this continues on. There's actually a lot of other comments. Um, there's so many. We, we can't go through all of them, can we? But a lot of this stuff is literally conflating male and man, female and woman, gender and sex. Okay, I get it. They are somewhat linked. No one's going to deny that. There's a reason why every single culture creates similar gender roles, even though they're not exactly the same. There's probably something biological there. But at the same time, that is no reason... That is no reason that if you're an outlier, you can't inhabit the other role. But wait, what did she do? Let 
It doesn't really say. W was she literally just fired over tweets? Hold on. Okay, here we go. I think I finally found it on The Guardian. Maya Forstater's case was about protected beliefs, not trans rights. She will use somebody's preferred pronouns out of politeness, but, but she doesn't feel bound to because she fundamentally doesn't accept that a man can properly become a woman. I mean, if you were to change this use of man to male and this use of woman to female, this is kind of how I feel. I use somebody's preferred pronouns out of politeness, but I don't feel bound to because I fundamentally don't accept that a male can properly become a female. Yes, that is pretty much my position. Because, one, I don't feel bound to do anything. No authority will tell me what to say. I will say whatever the fuck I want. Anyone or anything that would enforce compelled speech on anybody is inherently tyrannical. Doesn't matter what the speech is. Secondly, and more importantly, I don't think the government should be able to enforce politeness. And I think it would be disastrous for you to actually attempt so. I use Lilith's pronouns because I'm polite. I consider her to be a woman because I'm polite. In the exact same way that I consider my cis girlfriend to be a woman. Because I'm polite. There are many instances where people who are specifically being rude, maybe because they're an asshole, maybe because they have a grievance, you know, who knows. But they will approach somebody who is obviously a cis woman but looks very masculine and will treat them like a man because they're being a dick. That is not being polite, but it shouldn't be illegal. And in the same way, I consider Lilith a woman because I'm being polite. And politeness is all you need. The state doesn't need to step in. Jesus Christ, this video is turning into, like, my trans rant, so maybe I should just get on with it. Okay. She lost an employment tribunal case, which, had she won it, would have allowed her to take legal action against a global development think tank that did not renew her contract after she started posting views some staff found offensive on Twitter. Well, it's not really getting fired, is it? Like, not renewing a contract is not the same thing as losing your job. Like, if they just said, oh, we're going to fire you now, I think that'd be outrageous. It would be over the line. But they just said, we're just not going to hire you back. Like, that's reasonable. People can hire people. People can not renew contracts for any fucking reason they want. Once the contract's over, the relationship is done. Okay, that was a fucking rabbit hole. But J.K. Rowling came out in defense of this person. It seems like she did so out of ignorance because the way that she framed her tweet was that she thought the person was getting fired, but they weren't. They were just not having their contract renewed. Does that tweet make J.K. Rowling transphobic? It probably just makes her ignorant. I don't think it makes her transphobic. But as far as I can tell, that was only one data point in a series of data points. And somebody compiled all of the instances of J.K. Rowling's transphobia, so let's at least give him a skim, eh? Let's go down here. The Maya Forrester legal case? Alright, so we've seen that. Let's see the rest of them. Support for Magdalene Burns. Magdalene was a great believer in the importance of biological sex and didn't believe lesbians should be called bigots for not dating trans women with penises. Um... None of this is arguable. <laughs> if, you, if you're a lesbian and you don't want to date... A trans woman with a penis, it's not bigotry, it's just preference. Holy Christ. Every single trans person I know and interact with agrees with me on this, and I'm very publicly... Yeah, see, I've, uh, maybe things have changed over the years, but I have met a number of, of trans individuals on Twitter who are completely insane, and they're like, no, you're a bigot. It's like, no, dude, no. The reason J.K. Rowling received such a backlash for supporting Magdalene Burns wasn't because she believed in sex or because she observed how sexuality works. It was because of Burns' very openly transphobic, antagonistic, and often conspiratorial views on trans people. Okay, let's see these views. You are fucking blackface actors. You aren't women. You're men who get sexual kicks from being treated like women. Oh, <laughs> I think you're, like, confusing... Trans woman with, like, a sissy hypno or something. <laughs> Magdalene? I don't know if you know what's going on. <laughs> Holy fuck. Like, the second one. George Soros, the money behind the trans... This is nothing, alright? George Soros is literally the prince of fucking darkness, so whatever. I'm sure he has... He, ha he has his fingers in many a pie. But this. Wow. Our oppression isn't a fetish, you pathetic sick fuck. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I, I would... I would actually classify this as... As some transphobia here, dude. <laughs> Turf. Um, everything in this in this passage, like J.K. Rowling's quotes, they seem to be stupid. Biology. 
As someone who is an avid lover of biology, I find the, the gender critical ignorance of biology and their blind faith in it that agrees with everything they already think very frustrating. All right, all right, okay. Clownfish, one of the many animals that changes sex in the wild. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, fine, you know, but we are not clownfish, we're humans. It's a little bit different. In terms of biology, JK Rowling actually seems to be rather correct because generally when it comes to biology, the biological argument almost always falls into the, you know, the non-trans side of things just because you know if you're a reasonable trans person you accept your own biology it, 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 that is the point of transitioning frankly education and safeguarding the second reason is that i'm an ex-teacher and the founder of a children's charity which gives me an interest in both education and safeguarding like many others i have deep concerns about the effect trans rights movement is having on both okay so what what is that effect this person grew up in the era of section 28 horrible and oppressive law that made it illegal for schools to even acknowledge that lgbt people e existed Okay. And I agree, actually, yeah. Teaching kids about, well, maybe not kids, you know. Over here, uh, sex ed, when I was younger, started at, I think, grade 5 or grade 6, which would have been 10 or 11? Maybe 12? I think that, that's a reasonable age to start it. You know, it, it probably shouldn't be a kindergarten thing. Um, there is no problem with teaching kids of that proper age that LGBT people exist. It is part of the human sexual experience. You shouldn't be teaching it to kindergartners, but you should be teaching it to people who are like 10 or 11 or 12. Fine. Freedom of speech. Trans people are finally, for the first time in centuries, being allowed to speak freely about what and who they are. Freedom of speech is what has allowed us to gain rights at all. I 100% agree, which is probably why we shouldn't be curtailing freedom of speech for those individuals who disagree with you. And I'm saying that as somebody who agrees with you, generally. If some asshole wants to misgender you and treat you like shit because you're trans, well, that's their right, and you have the right to tell them to fuck off and not associate with them. I don't think the state should be coming down on anybody one way or the other. And no, saying that transphobes have free speech too, and they should be able to exercise it as long as they're not actually, you know, attacking somebody else or inciting violence, um, that's not debating your existence. I, I really hate the existence argument that comes out of the trans lobby, because that generally is not what's going on. If I'm a dick, and I refuse to use your pronouns, that's not me debating your existence. You very clearly are still there. You're not going to Thanos snap away if I use the wrong pronoun. That's just me being a dick. Holy fuck, is JK Rowling, like, threatening somebody over a tweet? Like, fucking hell, dude. I'm gonna sue you because you shitposted on the internet. Lisa Littman and rapid onset gender dysphoria. Nobody, the activist insisted, ever could ever be persuaded into being trans. The claims that LGBT people are confused or that they've been tricked into being LGBT or that they can be converted out of it are as old as homophobia and transphobia themselves. Um, I agree. With a caveat. Because there are definitely people who go through phases, for sure. Like, you, you can't say that there's not. There, <laughs> Scrump is one of them. He went from being completely straight to only wanting to fuck femboys, like, over the course of five years. You know? Sexuality does change. It is a taste, and like any other taste in music, in food, in whatever, it will change over time. It'll change naturally. And I think you can actually push it a little bit, you know? Like, if you are, like, bi-questioning and you watch way more gay porn, you might end up swinging more and more in that direction. I think you can actually do that to yourself. Um, however, I don't think that, like, the Mike Pence you know, shock somebody, strap them to a chair and make them straight is going to work. I think you have to like be open-minded and willing to do that to yourself. And I think it, it, it does at least work on some level. I don't think you can be forced to do it, but I think you do have that control over yourself over a long period of time. And like when it comes to rapid onset gender dysphoria, you, you can't deny that there's like a pink pilling culture out there. Um, a friend of mine, Ava, is male. However, he takes hormones to look more like a girl, but does not want to transition. He, he's completely a gay male. He just wants to look like... He, he basically wants to be a trap, okay? That's the situation. There is, there's no, like... There's no desire to, to transition or to, be, to, to identify as a woman or live as a woman or anything like that. They simply want to be a really, really girly-looking gay male. And Ava looks more like a woman than a lot of people that I know, but he's still male, and that's the point. And he experienced this from what he's told me, that... There are definitely people who who went to him and said, hey, you need to transition. And he's like, no, I don't. I'll just take estrogen, but be a man. And they're like, no, you're offensive to us. So, like, you, you can't deny 
that there's like not like a pink pillar or I think, I think people call it like egg culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Egg. Egg is a name for a trans person who is in total denial of being trans. They are most of the time questioning their gender identity actually or just trying to figure out what the heck is going on in their life. Where Joe says, wow, I really want a skirt that goes spinny. And then Bob says, what? Joe says, oh, um, I'm still cis. Bob says, are you an egg? Joe says, what? No, of course not. And the ends with Joe is definitely an egg. Now, the whole point of, of the egg idea is that if you, if you question your gender at all, and I think everyone has, like everyone thinks, hey, I wonder you know, what, what it would be like to, be, to like wake up for a day and like be the opposite sex, you know? Hmm. Th that doesn't make you trans, it just means that you have an inquisitive mind. But the trans egg people, which there is like a weird subculture that I've begun to delve into, maybe I'll do a video on it because it's kind of fucked, but they basically take anybody who questions gender at all, Anybody who might cross-dress, and even though they're, they're sure they're not trans, and they say, no, you're an egg, and it's our responsibility to hatch you into a trans person. And they kind of, like, they, they, like, push them into it. And it's like, fucking hell, man. This is insane. This is some nutty shit. So I do think that what J.K. Rowling's talking about here is a real phenomenon. It might not be that common. It might not even necessarily be something that we have to do anything about, other than simply be more willing to tell people to fuck off if you have to. Desistance, detransition, and if I were a kid today, I would have been transed. I mean, there, there's a lot of stories of, like, trans people who detransition. They're like, yeah, I was just a gay man, and I kind of got pushed into this by those around me. Yeah, I do think this happens. I don't think it's common, and I don't think it invalidates the experiences of actual trans people, but you can't say it doesn't. You can't fucking say it doesn't. I'm also aware through extensive research that studies have consistently shown that between 60 to 90 percent of gender dysphoric teens will grow to their dysphoria. And this person even admits, some studies do show that prepubescent children showing signs of gender dysphoria will likely grow out of it. They also show that if gender dysphoria persists into adolescence, then it is almost certainly permanent. This is why when I was doing that, um, that podcast with Lilith, I was saying, listen, maybe 16 is like the right age where you can start transitioning. You know, legally before that, it's a little bit muddy, you know, probably not because you don't know. But 16, it's like, okay, if you're still trans by 16, it's like, okay, here, here we go. Let's do it. And this person even says like, yeah, you, you know, uh, someone who's eight or nine saying that I'm a girl when they're actually a guy, like you might grow out of it. And you, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, with someone, you know, questioning and then growing out of it and then being cis. And they're just like, there's nothing wrong with someone being trans. It's all fine. Misogyny and women as a political class. From the leader of the free world's long history of sexual assault accusations and his proud boast of grabbing them by the pussy, to the incel movement, to trans activists who declare that turfs need punching and re-educating, men across the political spectrum seem to agree women are asking for trouble. Yeah, I, even if I were to characterize all of this as being the truth, and I think each one of these instances is significantly more complicated than how J.K. Rowling's portraying here, um... No, I, I don't think that the trans activists declaring that turfs need punching is in quite the same boat. Because these are nominally right-wing violence, while this is left-wing violence. It does not come from the same source. It does not have the same philosophical underpinning. You can't call them the same thing. I, it does feel like she's just throwing trans activists under the bus just because it suits her political purpose in this paragraph. So I don't know about this one, dude. Trans women think being a woman is a costume, but as many women have said before me, woman is not a costume. Woman is not an idea in a man's head. Woman is not a pink brain a liking for Jimmy Choo's, or what's a Jimmy Choo? Or any of the other sexist ideas that now somehow touted as progressive. Holy fuck. This is a bit much for me, dude. <laughs> Domestic abuse and sexual assault. Alright, and I'm sure you know at this point, uh, if you don't, I guess I'll just tell you, that J.K. Rowling was in fact assaulted by her first, uh, her first husband. If you can come inside my head and understand what I feel when I read about a trans woman dying at the hands of a violent man, you'd find solidarity and kinship. I have a visceral sense of the terror in which these trans women will have spent their last seconds on earth, because I too have known moments of blind fear when I realized that the only thing keeping me alive was the shaky self-restraint of my attacker. So I want trans women to be safe. At the same time, I do not want to make natal girls and women less safe. When you throw open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he is a woman, and as I've said, gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones, then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. That is the simple truth. There's a practical 
argument here that I think J.K. Rowling's probably right about. However, at the same time, there's also a practical argument against it. Lilith is, as we all know, biologically male. Should she decide to walk into a public restroom, and it's a female public restroom, nobody's going to say anything because she looks like a woman. She acts like a woman. She dresses like a woman. She speaks like a woman. She has a woman's voice. Nobody will give a shit. However, if you truly are like a male rapist who's using a fake transitioning to try and get a hold of more victims, um, I think it'll be a lot more obvious. At least I would hope. You would not look like Lilith. You would look like it is ma'am. All right? Fear. Huge numbers of women are justifiably terrified by trans activists. I know this because so many have gotten in touch with me to tell their stories. They're afraid of doxing, of losing their jobs or their livelihoods, and of violence. That is a legitimate fear. You should not be fired for your political opinions, I don't think. Of course, the counter to this in this article is, in 11 countries it is against the law and punishable by the death penalty to be a trans person. I don't think you can put this on the, uh, on the head of the West. I don't think it's, I don't think it's Western countries. Let me, let me just, let me just see, I'm kind of curious. Ah, uh, yes. All Middle Eastern and African shitholes, dude. Totally bastions of liberal capitalism and human rights. Yeah, yeah. It's the West's fault that this is the case. In the USA, in 43 states, it is still considered a valid legal defense to murder a trans person if you found yourself attracted to them. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty fucked, in my opinion. That's, that's pretty fucked. A lot of this stuff is pretty fucked. But you know what? This is like oppression Olympics, you know? This is straight up whataboutism. The fact that, that trans people have all of these problems, which are legitimate problems, you cannot deny, does not mean that this isn't a problem. They both are, of course. So that seems to be the list of data points for JK Rowling being a transphobe. And I think it's about half of them that I, that I think I side with. Like like the Maya Forstater legal case. Uh, kinda, like half. Support from Magdalene Burns, yes. Turf, yes. Biology, no. Education and safeguarding. Yes. Freedom of speech? No. Rapid onset gender dysphoria? No. If I were a kid, I would have been trans today? No. Misogyny and women as a political class? Yes. Trans people think being women is a costume? Yes. Domestic abuse and sexual assault? Half and half. Trans women in women's bathrooms? Yes. And fear? Half and half. So, it, it seems like of the, the 13 points here, I, I think that like 6 or 7 is, is valid when you really add it all up. Of course, there is the whole guilt by association thing where J.K. Rowling follows people who are a lot more mask off in their transphobia. She's liked tweets that call trans women men in dresses. Uh, she claimed it on a middle age moment. All right. She posted this and then deleted it, claiming that she was just copying somebody else's words. I love this truly fabulous Ichabog with its bat ears, mismatched eyes, and terrifying bloodstained teeth. In court, Wolf claimed the Facebook post, which he had said he wanted to fuck up some turfs, was just bravado. Um, weird, um, but fine. I guess it was. You're saying it's somebody else's words, and you you didn't know. Uh, all right. More recently, you've got people who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Wumbin, wimpund, wumud. Yeah, I get the point, but uh, I just say female, dude. When when women stop menstruating at menopause, they're still considered women, right? So this, this, this doesn't make sense. And of course, most recently of all, you have the new J.K. Rowling book that came out where apparently there's some kind of um, murderer, and what he does is he dresses up as women in order to disguise himself while he's committing his crimes. And people are saying that that is transphobic, even though the person who's committing the crimes is a cis man. He's, he's not a trans man. He's not a trans woman. He's not anything like that. It's just that he dresses up as a woman to hide the fact that he's committing these crimes and he uses it to like get into certain spaces and this and that. And because that's not trans, it's not even cross-dressing in fact. It's literally just a guy wearing a disguise to commit a crime. I don't see how that can be transphobia. However, if you put it into the larger context of some of the things that JK Rowling has said, I can see why some people are taking it that way. To me personally, it's just really incredible to think about because 20 years ago, it was the right wing of politics that was burning JK Rowling's books. They were saying that they were possessed by the devil and it was Satan worship and black magic and all this nonsense. But now it's the left doing it. <laughs> I, I remember a time when the left were, were like very pro Harry Potter. You know, you, you saw in a, at a lot of like left wing protests in the mid 2010s, people holding up like signs saying that uh, Trump was Voldemort and all this nonsense. 
But now you have the left doing the very same things that they decried the right for doing, you know, 20 years ago. Damn, getting old is weird. But okay, the final verdict on the question. Is J.K. Rowling a transphobe? And as far as I can tell, I mean, maybe? Like, she hasn't gone full mask off. She hasn't said, I hate trans people. She hasn't, you know, actively advocated against trans rights specifically. She's advocated for a separation between cis women and trans women in the political sphere, which in practice might actually erode some trans rights. I'm not sure. But even though she hasn't gone mask off, there's still, like, enough data points where the mask slips a little bit that there actually might be some transphobia in there. I wouldn't be surprised. And here's what I compare the situation to. We all knew a long time ago that Richard Spencer was straight up a white supremacist. He very rarely outright said it. He was always, you know, very kind and very debonair. And he always posited his claims and his views as being not anti-black, but just pro-white. We all kind of got that feeling from him. We didn't really have any concrete proof. The mask hadn't really slipped that often. But we're like, hold on. No, this guy is not what he's saying. This, this guy is something else. And we all knew it. And then, you know, a few years later, after the downfall of Richard Spencer, um, we got that absolutely hilarious, ridiculous recording where Richard Spencer in private is, like, ranting and raving about octoroons and all of this, like, legitimately hateful, racist shit. And the reason it was so funny is because it was finally mask off. It was finally a direct confirmation of what we all knew. Now, we didn't need that confirmation to understand beforehand that Richard Spencer was probably just a big fucking racist. We already understood that. The confirmation was just icing on the cake. So I guess my answer to the question is, is J.K. Rowling a mask-off transphobe? No. However, if in 10 or 20 years, a recording comes out of J.K. Rowling in private, ranting and raving about trans women and how much she hates them and thinks that they're like oppressing cis women and abusing them and doing all this crazy shit if that recording came out i would not be surprised in the fucking least <laughs>